Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're here with another Photoshop tutorial. Now I know it's a Saturday and videos on this channel normally don't go up on Saturdays, but I figured with a bit of extra free time I could record an extra video and slip that in. And if you're already caught up and have done everything on the channel, it might be nice rather than waiting a week, you have a video in between with another tutorial for you to try out. Now this design is sort of like the last one that I uploaded in the sense that it's fairly simple. Well, fairly, but it's pretty fun to make and it's an overall simple concept. It doesn't involve heavy GFX, heavy editing, none of that nonsense. And it's fairly quick to make, though as you can probably see the video is 25 minutes long. But that's mainly due to me making it for the first time and trying to jump around figuring out how I want to organize it all. So without further ado, let's jump in the tutorial. So you're going to start out by making a new file at 960 by 540. Close out of this. And we're going to start off as well by deleting this background layer. Now you're going to want to find the model that you're going to be using. So let me go ahead and grab that model. Alright, so I've gone ahead and grabbed the model that I'll be using. And the reason you want to grab your model right at the start is so you have an indicator of what your overall color scheme is going to look like. Because that color scheme is going to be based off of your model. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my model into my central workspace. And then resize her a bit to a size that I know will be appropriate or close to appropriate for what I'll be doing. So that should be good, maybe a bit smaller. Perfect. So I'll go ahead and name this the model primary. And you'll see why I did that in a moment. And we'll control G this. And we'll name these the background section. We'll keep it all contained within here. Right click and make this red or any color that it's going to be easy for you to help keep organized. And now we're going to want to pick out the two colors from our model. So we're going to go to the eyedropper tool, or you can click I on your keyboard for as a shortcut. And since the majority of her is a pinkish hue, we're going to go with pink. So I'm going to sample the hair right here, and maybe a bit darker, and that'll work. Then I'm going to click X to swap over here on this left side. I'm going to make sure I'm still on my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to select an even darker shade of pink. Maybe that. So let's try these out real quick and see how they're going to look before we set ourselves on them. I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool. I'm going to drop down this first pink. That looks pretty reasonable to me. And then I'm going to drop down my second pink. Yep, it looks pretty reasonable. There's a definite difference between the two. So it's going to be easy to tell that there's some contrast between the two shades of pink. And now with those colors picked out, we can begin work on the model herself. So we're going to do another control G and we'll name these the models. We're going to do control J and we can move this above just to keep it a little organized. We'll name this model whites and we're going to go to blending options, color overlay, and we're going to make this white. Go ahead and rasterize that because we don't need that to be different. Then we're going to do another control J. This time we can leave that up here as model whites. And we'll name this the outline. And this is where we'll be using the first of our colors. So we're going to go to blending options. We're going to go to stroke. And we're going to click on the darker of the two shades that we grabbed. And let's make the size at about four pixels, maybe three. Three looks nice to me. We're going to rasterize this and let's hide these real quick. And we're going to go ahead and cut out everything except for the pink outline using the magic eraser tool. So just click and all the white will disappear. Now I don't want any of this stuff in the inside. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool. This is the quick way to do it. And I'm going to go all the way around where I don't want anything. 
So all around this stuff. There we go. And delete. Then right click, deselect, and that is gone. And now where there are three different layers, we can go ahead and start moving these around. So using your move tool, you're gonna move this first model white layer to the right some, till about this distance right here. And maybe using the arrows on your keyboard, move it down a bit. So one, two, three, four, and then maybe, maybe one more to the right, so five. And then we're gonna go to our outline and drag this over as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing, go down a bit, maybe double what we did for the white layer, then move to the right some. And then we have these three different layers set apart from one another. And we're not gonna to touch this for now, but we're gonna come back in a minute once we have the background ready. So we're gonna be using the following color for our background layer, 352. C, 3, F. Go over to the paint bucket, make sure you're on layer one and drop that down. Now this color will be easy to edit in the future if we wanna make it something else. Now that we have our background layer in place, now that we have our background layer in place, we can go ahead and make some more additional details to the back before we return to the character. So we're gonna swap this over here to a white. We're gonna go over to the rectangle tool Make sure we're on stroke, make sure fill is on transparent, make sure we're on solid line, and I'm not quite sure how large I want it yet pixel wise, but we're going to see in just a moment. So let's drag this across. And four pixels might not be enough. It looks fairly large here, but keep in mind the score size is going to be about there. So you're not going to see it at that point. So this is an okay stroke size, but I want the corners to be somewhat visible, perfect. So even at a zoomed out size, you can still see that there's some space between this white outline and the edge of the actual image. So we can go ahead and put this in its own separate group that we'll call white de decor. Because this will be on top of everything else that we do to this background layer. Now we can go ahead and move over to our pen tool. And you can either do it on path or shape. It's up to you. Shape will probably be a bit quicker, but I'm going to stick with path as it's something I'm more familiar with overall. So I'm going to click about here, click about say here, then go across, make selection, Shift F5, color, and it's going to be white. Hit check mark there. Deselect. And just so it's going to be completely even on the other side, I'm going to do Control J, Control T. I'm holding Shift as I move it, so it moves at 15 degree intervals. Hit check mark, and move this to the other corner. And then two more things. We're going to go grab our rectangle tool. We're gonna keep it at, let's say, three pixels. So it's gonna be a bit difficult to show up, but it should still work. So let's go ahead and make it a bit longer than we're ever gonna need it to be. Right click, rasterize, come down to about here, where it's not quite overlapping on the white. Hit delete. And then this is, as I mentioned, excessive in size, but that's perfectly fine. It's going to be going off the edges anyway, and nobody's going to be seeing it. So control T and move this over. And we want to make sure it's lined up properly with the actual angle that we put this at. So it might have been better to put this at a 15 degree angle as well when we made it and not at some oddball angle that I initially did it. So see, this is lined up there but not quite at the bottom. That should be fine though. And we'll put this out about here. Yep, you can see that. And we'll call this the top line, control J, and we'll put this about here. And we'll name this the bottom line. Now with the basics of the background out the way, we can go ahead and return to our actual character and wrap her up before we return to the last few details. I say few, but there's 
several because obviously it's still pretty plain at the moment. So for this model white, we're going to go to blending options and we're going to give it a drop shadow just so it differentiates itself a bit from this actual background layer. This should be an okay setting, but we're not going to rasterize the layer so we can always come back and edit it if we decide later down the road that it's not quite what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit OK there. And I'm actually going to return to the outline and I'm going to move it a bit more so it's a little farther out. So let's say to about here and move it up a tad. And yep, that should be fine. Now we're going to return to our primary model and we're going to go to blending options and we're going to go to outer glow. So the outer glow popped up. These are the settings that you're going to want to use. As you can see on the left side, it's showing up and on the right side, it isn't due to the white layer. And that's perfectly fine as that's what we want. Now we can do from here, if you really want to, to help her stand out a little bit more from the white, is to add a small drop shadow but you want to make sure distance is far enough away that it doesn't interfere with the actual outer glow itself. Now this is completely up to you. If you want to do this, I'll probably leave a drop shadow on mine. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and we turn back to the background because the character model is basically wrapped up. I'm first going to go ahead and hide all these settings. I'm going to create a new layer. Control G. We'll name this a text. And I want to get the text out of the way right now, just so it will help me line things up for the rest of the design. Now we're going to be using white again for the text. And let's see what font I'm going to want to use. I might stick with Tokyo. Let's see. Let's try this one. Actually, this one looks really nice. I normally use it for when I have to use Japanese characters, but it also works with English characters, which is nice. Let's go ahead and reduce the distance a bit. So perfect, we have that there. And if you want to add something below it, that's up to you. I'll probably leave mine as is. For example, below you could add Tsuke Anime in Japan, or if you had a gaming community, maybe Minecraft Digging Adventures, I don't know. But I'll just leave it as Tsuke, because if I feel as if I try to add something below, it's not going to show up well in the actual banner unless you're on mobile and then you might be able to read it. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool. This time I do want to use dots and I'll probably leave this at three pixels. Drag across the bottom. And nope, that's a bit too big. So two pixels. Perfect. And same thing as before. Right click, rasterize layer, come down. Make sure you delete everything that's above the actual line that you need. Delete. Now this line itself is way too long. And I probably cut it to here. If it's a bit short, that's fine. But it looks like it's just about perfect. Except for this little corner over here, that's a little nublet. Might actually make it a bit shorter as well. Perfect. Now you can apply font styles. I'm going to go over to my font. I'm going to change the font over to pink. And I'll probably be using a lighter shade of pink even. There we go. Maybe a bit darker. Perfect. And then hit check mark. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go over to our lips tool. Make sure it's on fill, not stroke. Make sure the fill is white. That doesn't matter. And we're going to go ahead and make a big old circle. Taking a second to load in. It might need to be a bit bigger even. So create a clipping mask. There we go. So control T. And let's make this guy a little bit bigger. Let's make him a bit of an oval. Stretch that out. Maybe a bit more. And that should be fine. And now this text has a neat little design to it where the white seems to swoosh in and the pink is right below it. Now we can also go into blending options, which is where we were a second ago, and maybe add in a bevel. 
can add in a drop shadow. Lots of different things you can do with it. And I might add in a drop shadow and a few other effects. I'll be right back while I get the settings right for that. All right, Ivan, start in three, two, one, go. So there's different effects you can go ahead and apply to the actual text itself. All right, so before I get into the actual settings, I did go ahead and size everything up just a tad because I felt it was a bit small and it would not show up well in Discord at the current size it was at. Let me turn to blending options and show you what I did. First thing I did was add a bevel and these are the settings right here. Feel free to copy those down and I added a drop shadow as well just to help it pop a little bit more and fit in a bit better with the overall layout of this design. So okay. And then we're done with the text layer for now and we can return back to the backgrounds. And I might actually shift over my character just a tad because there's a few things I want to do on this right side over here. So let's shift her over till she's about touching the font itself. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to go over to our rectangle tool and we're going to make a little rectangle here at about 50 by 50 pixels. And that's going to be with our first color. And let's put this at about the corner right there. I'm going to do control J and went ahead and move another one down. And this one is going to be the lighter of the two colors. Now having these here is a little nice indicator of the colors that were taken from the character itself and it adds a little bit to the overall design. Next step is going to involve us using the brush tool. So make sure you download the brushes I have in the description below because those are the ones that you need to use for this design. Now for the brush that you're going to want to select, it's going to be sample brush number 200. And you know, when I create a new layer and have that layer be dragged down beneath the actual model, because this brush is going to be going below it. And when you draw the brush, you want to do it in a quick, quick and unneat manner, sort of like this. Now you don't want to go as high as that. No, definitely not as high as that. And you kind of want to drag it across in that sort of fashion. Something like that, actually. That's just about perfect. And this right side, we can go ahead and delete that because we won't be needing it. The only part that we really wanted was this left side over here. Go ahead and drag around and delete the excess. We'll call this the brush. And now we're going to drag in one more asset. And that's going to be this little rose right here. Now we're going to, going to go back to our colors and maybe test out between the two of them to see which of them is going to make the rows look the best or the flower, whichever you're using. Go over to color replacement. I might keep it at that. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. Make sure it's above our model now. Do control T, downsize it. Maybe put it about here. Perfect. Now we can apply a drop shadow to it if we want to help it pop, but it's really unnecessary because it's pretty much there and in your face either way but I might apply a small little drop shower regardless, just because. Now we're gonna to return to our character model. We're gonna to go to the primary, do control J, drag it out of that model folder, drag it to the bottom and create a clipping mask. And clipping mask is unnecessary in the scenario because we're working with the entire frame. It doesn't matter if something goes out but I'm only doing it in this scenario just as a organization method. And we'll call this the model. This one does not need a fancy name. Clear layer style, do a control T. I'm gonna flip this one. And I'm gonna make her larger. Now normally this is a big no-no. It's not something you should be doing. And I probably could have returned to this one, but it's a bit quicker and you're not gonna be seeing much of her anyway. 
And you really have two options once you have her in place of how you want to apply your, your layer style to her, either an overlay or a soft light. I might go with soft light just because I think it looks a bit better. The overlay is also pretty tempting. I think soft light. Let's go with that. Okay, with our model in place, there's just a couple steps left and this design is finally finished. We're gonna go over to this base layer here and I probably should have named it base a long time ago. We're gonna go to blending options. I'm gonna go to pattern overlay and I'm gonna use a white one. Let's see, maybe this. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. We can go ahead and drop the opacity just a tad and hit OK. Okay, now this looks a lot better than what it would at before with just a plain solid background color. Just a couple steps left and this design is finally finished. Okay, so you're going to see this in the file as well where you're going to want these rays of light. Go ahead and drag it over. Make sure it's underneath this model layer at, on the clip. Go ahead and control T and resize it up. Now normally this is, as I mentioned, something that's pretty frowned upon and you shouldn't do in a general sense, but it's okay for the scenario because we're going to overlay it. Now with the light in the background, we can go ahead and make a few final adjustments. So I'm going to go into blending options for this base layer. I'm going to go into gradient overlay, go to gradients, basics, and then I'm going to click using the original background color that we had and the darker of the two pinks. And I'm going to quickly adjust this over so we're going to have the initial color be the dominant one. I'm going to make this linear dodge add. I'm going to make this radio style. I'm going to reverse this and I'm going to adjust the scale sum as well as the opacity. Opacity down to maybe 30 and scale up a bit. So you can see a difference. It adds a lot of light to the background and it brings in some of the pink that was originally part of the design. So let's take a quick relook at the pattern overlay since we did this. Maybe you drop the opacity some so it's not so overbearing. Yep, perfect. And I have this opened up. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to add a few little touch ups to the backgrounds. So we can name this the light rays. And we'll name these the little dots. I'm going to go to blending options, color overlay. And we're going to make it the pink, the darker pink, and outer glow. Make sure it's a darker pink. And let's resize this real quick before we make any final adjustments, just so we know it's going to be at the size that we want it to be at. Let's go back to blending options. We're going to go over to the outer glow and make a couple adjustments here. Perfect. So we're going to drop a couple of them all around the actual image. So let's put one there, control J, create a clipping mask, control T, move this over here. Or if you want to do a little shortcut, you can hold alt while you move your mouse to make an automatic copy, which is also pretty quick and efficient. And then maybe one more, or would that be too much? Let's see. Put one right here. And perfect. That basically wraps it up for this design. You might be able to do a few more things on the left side if you really wanted to. For example, 
maybe a few little arrows or other various shapes dropped in or maybe even your logo right here at the bottom or on the top. It's really up to you how you want to edit that. And you might also be able to take the flower and make a miniature version right in this corner over here. But it's up to you if you want to go and add all the extra stuff to it. But that wraps it up for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.